I was so excited to do something different this year, I enlisted the help of my two-year-old to decorate this perfectly pink little tree for her playroom. The cool thing is, this was not very expensive, but it packs a lot of visual punch. So Big Lots has a four foot tall flocked tree for $45. I got it on sale for $36. When I unboxed this thing, I knew it was going to be amazing. For $45, this thing is an absolute steal. So let's get to it. One last thing, I hope you love toddlers because my daughter helped. And it's potential decorations and potential setup. I am going to decide if I want it on the stand for some more height and obviously I have to fluff it, but here are some of the potential, I say potential because sometimes you just don't know until you get it on the tree and I've never decorated a pink tree. So we have a little bit of garland, I have velvet ribbon in pink and white and this beautiful wire white snowflake ribbon, some blush um, copper sprigs, and then my fur, and I have a tree skirt and ornaments coming. Yeah. Do you want me? To, do you want to show me the decorations? And then with the flock tree, we're gonna have a little bit of cleanup, but that's okay. So once I start fluffing this thing out, we'll see how it goes. So decorating a tree reminds me a bit of painting. There's some prep work that you have to do that might not necessarily be the most fun part of the process. Um, but in order to have a really beautiful tree, you want to make sure you do all of the steps in order. So first, we're going to fluff our tree and gently pull it apart because it's blocked. So there's a lot of excess blocking that's going to come off in this process, but we're just going to be as gentle as we can. Yeah. We're going to go through layer by layer. Okay, our tree is now ready for decorating. Reese is helping clean up some of the blocking. Um, but the advantage of putting a tree in a corner is you can actually pull the branches forward to make the front of your tree appear fuller. And then in the back, I don't know if you can really tell, but the back is a little more flat just because it's going to be hidden in this instance. It's gonna be right in this corner. so. We don't really need to have all the branches projecting toward that back wall. We can pull them toward the front and in this area I see where I could pull some more toward the front and then fluff that out a little bit more. So right now Reese is looking for open spots in the tree to place our nice full bloom. Very perfect. Yay! Thank you. All right, you want to so do Sometimes when I'm working with new materials that I've never used before, I like to just kind of get an idea of how everything is going to look. So here I've just kind of haphazardly placed everything just to see if it all flows, if there's anything I don't like, if there's something I want to scrap. So for example, that white velvet ribbon has a little bit of a yellow tone to it versus my ribbon that's like a starker white, so that might drive me a little bit crazy. I'm gonna decide on that. Um, but just really, you're looking to see if everything is like cohesive. Okay, let's talk about ribbon. I'm starting with my widest ribbon for this tree, which is gonna be a two and a half inch wired ribbon. It's important to use wire because it holds its shape and makes it flexible and really easy to work with. When you uh, bubble it out, it actually holds that shape. So what I'm going to do to start, I know everyone's super nervous to cut their ribbon, uh, but it does make it a lot easier to work with if you're doing a random pattern. So I'm just gonna cut about arm's length, and I like to start at the top of the tree, and if you're able to put it in the intersection of the branches, kind of just hold it. And because this is a flocked tree, there's a lot of texture on the branches, so it holds the ribbon really nicely. But if you have a real tree or a non-flocked tree, it should hold it just fine. If you're worried about that, you can always add something like an ornament hook or um, bend the branch around your ribbon. So 
I'm going to start right there and then I'm going to let this kind of trail off this way and do, see if it bends for me, and do a bit of a twisty whirl here. Okay, so I want to show you something important because everyone's always worried about how the ribbon stays on the tree. It actually just kind of sits on the tree and you'll have some areas like, yes, you can wrap a branch around that. But remember, this is our very first layer. So as you add ornaments and sprigs and other elements like this, I'm going to add this flower. It tucks that ribbon in and holds it right into place. So I don't have to worry too much about securing it. It's literally just held in with the friction of the branches. Um, so I just twisted this piece and just kind of placed it in between. And then you can twist it up. And then, like I said, as you add other elements, that will help secure it. Or you can secure it, you know, by bending a branch over it up here. But this tree doesn't have a lot of branches, so I don't want to bend any to hold it when I can just use my ornaments and accessories. absolutely in love with this velvet ribbon something to keep in mind is it's not wired so you have to be very strategic about how you secure it and placement i would not recommend using this on a full-size tree unless you layer it with a wired ribbon to help secure it next you want to start adding your large elements so in this case flowers i always try to alternate placement i look for holes in the branches areas that need filled in more, and then you can move on to your smaller accessories like your sprigs. Now this is the interesting part of the process because I actually hated the tree. I tried a few different things. I moved flowers. I thought, does it look too granny? Um, but this is all part of the process and you just have to trust it. I next started adding in my ornaments. So I started with my larger ornaments. You want to apply the rule of three, so making sure that you alternate placement and then I started adding in my fun ornaments and the little small baubles that I grouped in little mini groups of three. I really wanted to capture the whimsy of the room. Since this was for her playroom, I wanted to create a whole scene where she could have a cozy spot to read a book and just have fun with it. As far as fullness of decor, there really is no right or wrong. I prefer where the tree is really full and just bursting with ornaments and bursting with ribbon, but you can achieve a really beautiful look with much more simple accessories and decor. All right, so it's finished. I did a mix of flowers and fur and velvet and then pink and white ornaments. Some of my favorite are actually some of these that I found at Target this year. And also, I just want to make sure to mention that I zip-tied this to the stool because toddler's at play, so just in case. Alright, so now I'm going to turn on the lights. 